Neurons are specialized cells that transmit electrical impulses within the nervous system. The nervous system itself is broken up into two parts. The central nervous system, which is made up of the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which includes all of the extending neurons that branch off of the central nervous system. These two systems work together to receive and send signals that allow you to perceive and react to your surroundings, among many other things. Structures of individual neurons are very specific. The main parts include the dendrites, the cell body or soma, which contains the nucleus, the axon, and the axon terminals. When electrical signals are sent through a nerve cell, they always travel in one direction from the dendrites to the axon terminals and cover all of the space in between. Neurons, like I have said, send signals through their cells to other neurons. But what exactly is the signal they are sending? Interestingly, the signal is an electric one. That's right, your body generates electricity and moves it so fast we couldn't dream of seeing it with our own eyes. So how does this work? Electricity is all about charges and carrying them from one area to another. Within normal electricity outside of our body, like the electricity used to charge your cell phone, negatively charged electrons are moving across the particles within the wire. This in turn has the power to charge the battery in your phone. The electricity in your body works a bit differently, but the concept is the same. Charges are moved from one area to another, only this time they are not electrons. Charges in the body are created by negative and positively charged atoms, also called ions. When these charged particles move across the cell membrane, they change the voltage inside of the cell. This change in voltage due to the movement of ions is what creates the signal sent through neurons. Now that we know the basics of neurons and how they send signals, it's important to understand how the signal actually works. An electrical signal is being sent when a neuron sends a message which is a pretty cool concept thinking about how your body can generate electricity. This electricity, though, is simply a balancing act of ions across the membrane of a neuron. When a neuron is at rest, it means that the ion concentrations on the inside of the cell adds up to be more negative compared to the ion concentrations outside of the cell, which are more positive. The voltage on the negatively charged inside of the cell at this point will be around negative 70 millivolts. This voltage is reached by the workings of a sodium-potassium pump. This membrane protein actively transports sodium ions out of the cell and moves potassium ions into the cell. Both sodium and potassium are positively charged ions, but the difference is that for every two potassium ions pumped into the cell, three sodium ions are pumped out. This creates a gradient, leaving more positive charges on the outside of the cell, making the inside more negative. Additionally, there are other negatively charged molecules inside of the cell that aid in creating the gradient. When this gradient is reached, the neuron is ready to fire an electrical signal, and will do so when it receives the proper message from neurotransmitters of another adjacent neuron. When a resting neuron at negative 70 millivolts receives a signal from neurotransmitters, voltage-gated sodium ion channels open and the sodium ions on the outside of the cell rush in. This is the process of depolarization. When the positively charged sodium ions rush in, the voltage on the inside of the cell rapidly becomes positive. This positive influx generates a new charge potential across the membrane called an action potential. This change in voltage is the actual signal that is passed across the neuron. Once one part of the neuron reaches an action potential, the next section gets triggered and the change in voltage moves down the axon in one continuous motion, like a wave. Before another signal can be sent, the charges within the neuron need to be reset. The rebalancing process starts with repolarization. During repolarization, potassium channels open and let the positively charged potassium ions out of the cell, bringing the internal charge back down to a negative voltage. At this point, there is a high concentration of potassium ions outside of the cell and sodium ions inside of the cell. To fix these concentration gradients and bring the voltage back to negative 70 millivolts, the sodium-potassium pump works to restore the neuron back to its resting potential, again moving 3 sodium out for every 2 potassium in.
Some neurons in the body are insulated by a fatty white substance called myelin. Myelin is a mixture of protein and phospholipids that is produced by glial cells, also called Schwann cells, in the peripheral nervous system. These structures wrap around the axon, only leaving small sections of the axon exposed to the external environment. These gaps are called nodes of Ranvier. The benefit to having a myelin sheath is that an electrical signal can be sent through the neuron at a much greater speed. Instead of having the signal travel through the entire axon, the electrical signal jumps from gap to gap, skipping the space in between. This allows signals to be sent almost a hundred times faster compared to an unmyelinated neuron. The process of the signal moving across the gaps is called saltatory conduction. One downside to myelin is that it takes up a lot of additional space. This could be bad if space is a limiting factor in the body. When an electrical signal reaches the end of the axon terminals of one neuron, a chemical signal is passed between a very small gap, called a synapse, to the dendrite of an adjacent neuron. This will ensure that the dendrite of the next neuron will be triggered to continue to send the original signal to its desired destination. It is important to note that these neurons do not physically touch, but instead possess a very small space between these two structures, called a synaptic cleft. When the signal reaches the end of the axon terminal, chemicals called neurotransmitters are released into the synaptic cleft. By chance, some neurotransmitters will attach to protein receptors on the dendrite of the adjacent cell. This will make the next nerve cell fire another action potential down its axon and to another nerve cell. A common example of a neurotransmitter is acetylcholine. This signal helps activate muscle contractions and is also associated with attention and waking up. With an understanding of how neurotransmitters and synapses work, scientists have developed methods for fighting off insects that damage crops by interrupting their synaptic transmission. Neonicotinoids are chemicals that can block acetylcholine receptors in insects. Due to the receptors being blocked, acetylcholine cannot bind to the dendrite of the next neuron, eliminating the signal for the next neuron to fire. This means that the nervous system of the insect will stop working because the signals can't be sent. In addition, the enzymes that break down acetylcholine do not work with breaking down the neonicotinoid chemicals, making the process even more damaging. This leads to paralysis and death of the insect. While neonicotinoids have been successfully used to protect crops from pests, there are some disadvantages to their usage. There have been links to the chemical and the reduction of honeybee populations, which is bad because bees are important pollinators in ecosystems as well as a reduction in bird populations because their food source, the insects, are being killed.